I just wanted to talk a little bit about my experience working with the C300 Mark II. Let's see, May, June, July, August, September, October. Wow, five months, five months that I've been using this camera now. I've used it for all sorts of projects, from documentary work, to live event stuff, to music videos, to social media content. I love using it for low light stuff, especially pairing it with some of these lenses that, I, you know, I don't understand how people aren't talking about this, but if you go on eBay and look up Canon camera, or Canon cinema camera, Canon lenses, Canon L lenses, you know, the nice lenses that, you know, 10 years ago we all dreamt of owning because they were so expensive, but now they're really cheap. Like I'm talking, I picked up an 85 1.2 for, I don't remember how much, but it was less than $500. Pairing the C300 Mark II with these lenses has been an awesome experience. When I first got it, you know, like most of us do, you know, we shell out on the camera. You know, we, we don't anticipate how much the accessories are gonna be. And let me tell you, the accessories were really expensive. Um, like the storage alone, probably like around $300 that I paid for uh, the CFast cards, 256 gigs. I bought two of them because the camera takes two cards, which is really nice. And it also takes the SD card at the front if you want to record some proxies, which is really nice that I don't have to go and make proxies and post and wait for that. It just does it in the camera and I have it in the memory card. So uh, really nice for that. I don't know what I was on about, but the C300 Mark II, yes, really nice to work with, really nice to color grade with um, and are really cheap right now. It's such an awesome opportunity for a lot of us filmmakers who love using the Sony cameras, uh, but maybe they don't want to jump the gun and get something like the Sony a7, you know, A1 or what have you, or the Canon um, R6, which I believe is around $6,000, those cameras. Um, you can get something really epic and focused, especially if you want to do just only video uh, cinema stuff, you're going to get some really great results with the Canon camera. Um, and that's because the camera is actually designed for video stuff. It's designed to capture cinema, cinematic video, running gun video. You can really make it sing in post if you color grade with you know, Lumetri Color in Premiere or in DaVinci Resolve. Um, but you could also do some funky color grading and really have some fun there. And for someone like myself that I love, you know, expressing myself in the post and, and really love editing and, and getting in the, the nitty gritty when it comes to color, uh, this camera's really fun for that kind of stuff, so. Now, you know, this camera does not shoot raw. You know, it shoots um, these MXF files, which, do pack a lot of information and honestly it's enough information for my usage which is you know documentary work uh music videos that sort of thing uh, i believe it's not netflix approved internally but you can get external outputs uh, i believe netflix recommends you use it with a monitor if you're going to use it for a netflix project or what have you so but you can use it for that you just have to get the the proper kind of extra little tidbits that come with that i guess so uh, yes, uh, C300 Mark II is also fantastic in that the weight of it provides a little bit of a stability crutch. So I like to, you know, hold my breath in as we do <laughs> and just pick up the camera and, uh, yeah, just, uh, just hold it. Looks, the footage looks nice. If I need to, you know, smooth it out in post, I can do so. I can make the camera, the stability work really well. Sometimes the, st the stabilization doesn't work, but that's with most cameras, right? So. I wish it had image stabilization. It does not have image stabilization. Um, but you know what? Neither does my Sony a6400, which I shot so much of my video work with it before. So as using the C300 Mark II now, in comparison to the Sony a6400, it's a clear winner when it comes to doing professional video. There's also the benefit of showing up to set and uh, clients, or even sometimes if I'm doing behind the scenes stuff and I bring that camera with me, the director will pull me aside and he'll ask me a couple questions about it. Um, it really kind of attracts a lot of the people that are interested in camera stuff just because it's got such a look, you know, um, and it's big and, and stuff and it, and it feels good. So people are interested. It's a camera that's a conversation start. It's a bit of a party trick, you know? So if you're interested in 
uh, that sort of thing, opening up yourself to some networking opportunities. Uh, so long as you have the proper mindset for it, I also think pairing that with this camera um, and really showing up with something that makes you look like you're serious about this project, um, I think is a is uh, a benefit for some, you know, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Moving on to the, uh, the sensor, I mean the sensor, I mean, I'm not moving on to anything, but the sensor image is uh, beautiful, like I said. It's Super 35, so you do get a little bit of a crop, but I, you know, I find this fine for my situations. I, I've shot with APS-C cameras my whole life, so um, you know, using this camera isn't any different than my experience in the past. And the price, of course, the price is such a benefit, of course, attached to the camera in that you can pick it up for use for real cheap. New, I would not recommend getting it new. I think it's a bit overpriced, to be honest, but uh, you can definitely pick it up used for less than three grand, four grand, and you'd have yourself a camera that can really, you know, really work. I just realized, dang it, was that inverted the whole time? It's embarrassing. You could use that extra money that you saved uh, from purchasing like a crazy expensive camera on getting some really nice lenses. And you can also get some really nice lenses for really cheap. So, you know, for me, for my situation, I didn't want to ball out on a whole new setup. Yeah, it's really exciting to be able to work with a camera like this. Uh, the other nice thing that I, I think I've been starved a little bit working with the Sony cameras and now working with the C300 Mark II is that the Sony camera batteries kind of suck, you know, even like the bigger ones. Yeah, they last a bit longer, but nothing really that can last all day. And the C300 Mark II takes BPA-30 uh, batteries. It also takes BPA-60 batteries. Now these batteries last all day for me. And now you're shooting really high resolution video. So it, it's nice to have, or, or you're shooting a lot of information with these cameras. So it's nice to have that extra, you know, it's nice to have that battery life, especially for running gun situations where you need to have that camera on, you know, at all times or what have you, or you're shooting a really long interview. That kind of stuff can be really important, you know, to have um, a battery that can last all day. So. That's a really nice benefit. Now you're not gonna see me, you know, put this camera on a gimbal. Coming from the Sony mirrorless world, it's a totally different experience shooting with a camera like this. And you know what? There's a bit of a psychological element to it as well, where I'm shooting with this camera and I feel much more in control, right? And so because I'm more in control, I feel more creative, like I can express myself more. Um, and that's something that I don't get typically with the Sony a6400 anymore at least. Like I've become so used to shooting with this camera and also the screen kind of sucks. So I don't really feel that inspiration. Where I shoot with a camera like this, I also, you know, I'm out and about on the streets and stuff and people are giving me looks and they're smiling and you know, they're, they're seeing that I'm doing something, you know, interesting and they see I have a professional camera. So there's a bit of, you know, a, 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 an open loop uh, for people. You know, if that's important to you as well, like, you know, I guess, you know, more power to you, but that's an observation that I've made. But also, you know, personally, internally myself, I feel more, much more inspired to go out and shoot and, and get interesting compositions and such with the camera. Uh, it might just be the novelty of shooting with log and uh, just trying to get used to, uh, you know, shooting with a new camera. Um, but I also think that the way the camera is built and it sort of draws you in a bit more to be, be more artistic with your shots. So uh, that's something else to consider shooting with a camera like this. Coming from the Sony world, the Sony mirrorless world, I definitely don't have that inspiration anymore. I don't feel it. So having that be reinvigorated within me uh, has been really nice. So something to consider. This camera works really well with IS lenses, like lenses that have image stabilization built into them. Uh, such as like the 24 to 7, the Canon 24 to 70 IS, like the 2.8 would be a perfect lens for a camera like this. Uh, it's great. Without IS, having that uh, flexibility of focal length um, at 2.8 and then also image stabilization in the lens is so valuable when shooting running gun stuff. So if you're looking for something like that, I also, I think shots look a lot more cinematic uh, on sticks anyway. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna try and shoot majority of my stuff on a monopod or uh, on, you know, some tripod or some sort of stabilization just because I feel like I get more cinematic shots like that. However, you know, if you decide to shoot handheld, you would not worry about getting rolling shutter like problems or making the footage look like jello, like you're not gonna get those sort of issues with a camera like this. And that's another kind of thing that adds to the cinematic feel of shooting with a camera like this is that, you know, 
Um, a lot of that jello-y stuff, you're, you're gonna find it a lot in the Sony cameras or even like the newer kind of Sony mirrorless cameras or what have you. Um, but shooting with a camera like this, you know, you're gonna get really kind of straight lines when you're, when you're panning left and right, at least for the most part, at least it has been in my experience. Another thing that adds to the cinematic kind of feel of the pictures that come out of this, this, um, this camera is obviously the Canon color science. Canon has uh, remarkable colors. Everybody always talks about the color science. It's sort of become a cliche at this point amongst uh, YouTube channels and stuff, and just like the community. But yes, the Canon, the Canon camera colors are truly breathtaking and amazing. It's just like straight out of the camera. If you shoot with like a regular Rec 709, like the picture looks great. Like you can, you know, blow it up and it'll look great. It'll look like someone created it. Um, however, if you do want that flexibility, it works out really well for that kind of stuff too. I tend to shoot with the Canon C-Log 3, and then I shoot with, um, and then I stick with the native ISO, uh, which is 800, because if I go anything beyond that, it can be too noisy and the, the picture can fall apart a little bit. Another thing that um, I guess could be a bit of a con and a pro at the same time is the picture, the 4K quality that comes out of this camera, it does up to 4K, 30 frames per second, if you did not know that. It's not as sharp as you would get on a, like something like a Sony a6400. Now, why is that? Well, the Sony a6400 has a 6K picture that's been downscaled down to a 4K. And so the Canon C300 Mark II does not have that kind of technology built into it. Mind you, this camera was built like, you know, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, released uh, actually probably more than that, you know? Um, and when it came out, it was 16,000, which is remarkable that I picked it up for less than that, uh, like 3,000, I think. That being said, that's not such a bad thing in my opinion, because I happen to think that a 6K picture downscaled to 4K, and then me downscaling that down to 1080p on a timeline can sometimes look a little too sharp for me. Now, I know that's a bit of a hot take. Uh, it might not be the most popular opinion out there, especially amongst people that love their resolutions and like pixel peepers or whatever, but I actually happen to think that a softer image, like a soft, like this regular 4K that you get out of C300 Mark II can actually look a bit more cinematic because the sharpness out of a 6K picture, it's just too much for me. Like it feels a bit too video-y, you know? Especially, uh, especially with the inclusion of the rolling shutter and, you know, other factors that contribute to, uh, you know, uh, low data rates, of course, like the low bit rate video on these Sony cameras compared to the amount of information that you get on a C300 Mark II quality, you know, it just makes more sense, so. So I don't think that's such a bad thing, you know, to, to have the picture not look as sharp as like something you would get out of a camera like a Sony A6400 or what have you, but I definitely do think it is a thing to consider. So, um, yes, did I talk about the battery life? I think I talked about the battery life. If I haven't yet, I need to emphasize the battery lasts all day. You're not gonna ever worry about battery life. If you carry two batteries with you, BPA 60 batteries or even BPA 30 batteries, you'd be fine. You know, you'd be fine for an all-day shoot. And the batteries, you know, they charge really fast for me. I, in my opinion, I've got some kind of third-party batteries that I picked up like on Amazon or something, and uh, they charge pretty quickly. So, you know, um, a, a con, I guess, not really a con, but just something else to consider is that the storage is gonna you know, it's gonna be expensive. You know, you're, you're gonna pay $300 I paid for my two CFast cards, which are very expensive um, and kind of a bit outdated at this point, but CFast cards, um, are they outdated? I don't know what cameras accept CFast cards anymore, but um, the CFast cards are about $150 per, per card. I paid for two of them because the camera takes two of them, which is nice to have that backup but they are expensive. So something to consider getting into it, if, especially if you're thinking about getting lenses and such or getting lighting. So definitely something to consider. Let me know in the comments um, if you found this interesting. Uh, be sure to like, because that helps. And um, thanks for watching. So I'll see you guys later.